There we go. Uh, good morning, happy Tuesday, everyone. Hopefully your Monday wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, my low is that we went from being warm in the morning to just miserable in the afternoon because of the rain to cold in the morning and we still get lots of rain. Can we please go back to warm weather? Like mother nature, somebody who's controlling the weather up there. Have we not paid our dues? Can we please have the sun shine again? Yes, I'm very well aware. April showers bring many flowers and we're still technically in April, but come on. It's right there. Like, we had it. This is literally the equivalent of like winning big in a casino and then they persuade you to like gamble it all again and you lose it, you know? That's what it feels like to me in terms of the weather. It's unbelievable. What's even more unbelievable is uh, my high, which is, I've been watching uh, Chuck Conroy's uh, Let's Play of uh, Black 2 and White 2. Needless to say, it's been a lot of fun to watch. In fact, uh, I'll put a link to this new episode down below, but Chuck Conroy got his first badge. I'll talk about that in a minute. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, my act of kindness was, I ran an errand for my grandmother yesterday. So, it was, uh, so that was nothing too major. She just wanted me to run to the grocery store and grab her, like, um, these little parfait things that are filled with, like, mini oranges, or orange slices, or, actually not really slices, because they don't even have the, the uh, rind, peel and rind on them anymore. Like the little sections of orange, or whatever. Okay, someone's gonna figure out what I'm talking about. So, about Chunga's playthrough of black and two and white two so far. Right now, the only legitimate gripe I have is Full disclosure, not that I'm straight up predicting who Chugga will have on his team, but come on, bro. Riola was right there. Like, it's pretty obvious, like, we, that I want him to have a Lucario on his team when it's over. I mean, I guess it makes sense he didn't catch one, simply for the fact that when Tepe evolves into Embor, it'll become a fighting type. Anyway. But if you're going against your first gym battle, against a normal type gym, you're gonna be, I mean, come on, you need a fighting type. It's the one type that's super effective against normal. Which reminds me, one thing that Charlie Conroy's been doing lately, at least that's what he did in episode uh, I know he did in episode two. He started in episode two and he did in three as well. Is when he runs into a new type of Pokemon, he's like talking about, you know, what the characteristics of that type are. You know, are they traditionally fast? Are they traditionally slow? Offense oriented? Defense oriented? What type of advantages they have? What type of disadvantages they have? And so on and so forth. I love that he's doing that. Because even though, for a veteran Pokemon fan, such as myself, I know them all, it's nice that he's being very con considerate of um, others who are either new to the games or just need a quick refresher. That's why Cherry Conroy is so awesome, because he definitely, he, he takes things into consideration. You know what I mean? And for those of you who don't know how normal types in Pokemon work, it's... They're basically, they don't have any type advantages, but only one type disadvantage. And 
ghost types are completely immune to them. However, they do consistently learn a wide variety of great moves, as well as the fact that HP is traditionally their highest stat with the occasional Pokemon with a different higher stat, but traditionally it's HP that's the highest. And that was actually the type of Pokemon Trigger Connor had to be at the first gym using his Tepig, which if you caught a Riolu on Route, well, technically it's Route 2, but they call it, it's Route 20 and Black 2 and White 2. If you caught a Riolu, it wouldn't be that hard. Anyway, so, <laughs> he's battling the gym leader, and literally the reason why Chugga won, oh, Chugga, Chugga won in two cases. One, is that the gym leader Charon kept using the move work up instead of actually attacking Chugga. Well, for a while, Chugga Conroy was just doing um defense curl and then just using uh, Ember and, you know, tackle. But here's where it gets funny. Uh, the gym leader's last Pokemon was Lillipop. And this is actually something I forgot to mention as to another reason why the black and white games are so great. Because if you ever play any Pokemon game, then you know that there's a theme music. Or, you know, music playing in the background. And you can't really hum it or do anything for, you know, copyright reasons. But the coolest thing they did in black and white, and then black two and white two, is when you reached the gym leader's last Pokemon, they changed the music into something like um, more exciting. Like, yeah, you made it. You're fighting to the end. It's been a tough battle, possibly. Like, you're almost there. Just take out this last Pokemon and you win. It gets you motivated, it gets you excited. It's really great gym leader music, which I highly recommend you look up. And another thing, which, like, <laughs> it's so funny. Chucky Conroy spent all that time using Defense Girl that Tepping is essentially a wall. He uses Ember on the Little Pop that Sharon had as his last Pokemon. And he got the burn. Oh yeah, that's the great thing about fire types, is uh, they're immune to burn, but they can dish out burns on everybody else. And it's awesome, because burn reduces the damage you take from Pokemon by a considerate amount, because it lowers that Pokemon's attack stat. And he won. Between like the damage over time from burn, and just using Ember the entire time, not to mention, Little Pup can't do a thing. Shugga won. You even got a level up out of that. Which you can learn new moves from level up, which is what Tapic did. And this is my one gripe about this particular moment. Because at level 15, Tapic learns a move called Flame Charge. <laughs> I know, I'm such a nerd, aren't I? And Flame Charge is actually really useful. Because... Every time you use it, your Pokemon's speed increases. Meaning, if your Pokemon didn't already move first, it's going to move first the next turn. Which is great. So now Trigger Connor is going to have two Fire-type moves that Tepic knows. Oh, he got rid of Ember. Yeah, if I was Chug, I, my moves for that would either be, would be Tackle, Ember, Flame Charge... And I would have either gotten rid of Tail Whip or Defense Curl. I'm thinking, I think I might have kept Defense Curl just because, again, with Ember you could get that burn. And then with Defense Curl, no one's really going to be able to do anything to you. It's hilariously simple. And it worked for Trigger Counter. -Roy. So congratulations, Trigger Counter, on getting your first badge. Um, oh. Another thing that Cherry Connor has been mentioning so far, and this is what I forgot to mention too, that the black and white games did. They implemented the seasons mechanic. As in, when you turn on the game, it can be spring, summer, autumn, or winter. But it's depending on the month. So, for example, let's say you start playing on January. 
January is spring. February is summer. March is when he started playing the game and recording is autumn. And April, the month we're in right now, if you were to play Pokemon Black and White or Black 2 and White 2, if you turn on the game, it'd be winter when you start. Pretty cool, right? And then it cycles back to uh, spring in the May, summer in June, autumn would be July, and then August would be winter. And then finally, September, spring, October, summer, November, autumn, and December, winter. So, some of the months kind of correlate to what time of year they're at. And depending on the season, it can legitimately affect the surroundings. Like, if there are puddles on the ground, like during the spring and summer and fall, in the winter, it's completely ice. If there's a path that's like blocked because there's like a giant crevice in autumn, well not a giant crevice, but you know, something you can't go over, in autumn, the leaves completely like covered so you can walk on it. It's really cool that they did that. And not many people really see that sometimes. Um, and not to mention the music changes too. Seriously, depending on like the time of year that, or the season that's going on in the game, you really could be potentially hearing like some of the best music, depending on what point of game you're at. It's difficult for me to say like what season Sugar Conroy could end the game on. Cause here's the thing. I made a prediction earlier that Chugga's going to end, like this Let's Play is going to end in like December. Or I said I wouldn't be surprised if it ended in December. It's very possible that while it's late December, you know, here, Chugga Conroy may have previously record, recorded the ending in November. Meaning it'd be autumn when he's done. Where, if he actually did record in winter, in December it'd be winter. Again, this is just hypothetical. But so far, the games have been going great. Like, I've been loving watching him play. I've even learned some stuff that I didn't even do. Seriously, his Let's Play is already better than anything I could have ever hoped to do back then. Because he's doing stuff that, like, I never did. Which... Man, do I feel kind of silly for not doing. I mean, I shouldn't really beat myself up on this. This is during the time when, like, for whatever reason, playing the games really became more of a chore. Which, I will admit I did kind of bring on myself, considering, like, I'm the kind of guy who, like, who, likes, who doesn't really have a favorite, who likes to catch them all, like, level them up, level grind, do all that. And breathe, oh gosh, how many hundreds if not thousands of eggs have I bred to get the Pokemon I wanted with like the right nature? Man, it was annoying. Seriously, this is before I realized how the Opal, the um, Everstone worked. For those of you who don't know, the Everstone is an item that if a Pokemon is holding it and they're about to evolve, the Everstone will keep them from evolving. Which sounds incredibly useless, and I agree. That part is useless, but it has another it has another use. If you're breeding and you're trying to get a Pokemon with the right nature, if another Pokemon you're breeding with has the nature that you're trying to get, and they're holding the Everstone, you increase that chance of the Pokemon being bred having that nature by 50%. Actually, a really great mechanic in Black 2 and Y2 that they implemented. I'll never forget this. If a Pokemon has two abilities, say Arcanine, for instance, has like Flash, Fire, or Intimidate, depending on what breeding slot, because you need, you know, two Pokemon in order to, you know, breed. Depending on what breeding slot that Pokemon is in, will greatly determine um, what ability the baby will have. Well, here's the thing. Um, normally, to determine what is going to come out of the Pokemon egg that you're hatching, 
usually it depends on whatever gender, whatever, whatever Pokemon is female. Because the baby Pokemon always looks like the mother. That's how they did it. So if the Arcanine happens to be female, you're going to have a baby Growlithe. Very simple. Now, it is possible for a male to breed and for the Pokemon to look like, you know, the male, but you gotta breed with Ditto. Yeah, you know, Ditto, the Pokemon that uses Transform and can look like anything? Yeah, that, that's, that's literally the only reason why anyone wants a Ditto for the sake of breeding purposes. It's just funny how it works that way. <laughs> I know. I am such a nerd. I'm so sorry. I don't like being a nerd, though. Being here is cool. One of my favorite comedians is, uh, uh, Don McMillan. And he's a former engineer turned comedian. And one of my favorite jokes of his is he's done, done a, like a three-way Venn diagram where it's IQ or smart, obsessed, and... What what was that third one you did? Um, not insecure. It's another word. Socially awkward. That's what it is. It's uh, it's IQ obsessed, socially awkward, and you're a nerd if you're like in the very middle of that diagram. As much as I hate to admit the fact I'm socially awkward, I have to admit. I am. I totally am. Uh, by the way, if you're socially awkward and smart, you're a geek. If you're smart and obsessed, that makes you a dork. And if you're obsessed and socially awkward, that makes you a stalker. <laughs> uh, Don McMillan's funny. Seriously, I should... I should do a video where I talk about him more. I, sh I really should start doing videos where I talk about my favorite comedians in like detail. I really should do that. Especially since one of my favorite comedians has a movie coming out on Memorial Day weekend. You guys may know who that is. I hope you all like this video. If you did like this, go to channel, follow me on social media. As always, I'm a very humble man. This video for all of you guys watching Joe Penny will be a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. And remember, if any of you guys want to talk with you, I'm watching me here to lend you all. So, all you back, take care and make good choices. 607 all day, baby.